scriptures, teaching session, our study scriptures session. We're going to do classes. Children, to the left hand side here, where I'm pointing to. So all the children should please move towards that direction. And parents that are to take care of their children should also be with them that side. Let's move to the left hand side if we are with our children. Move there now so they can get the best from the classes. Then the rest of us, youth, adults, to the right hand side here, from the middle this side to the right hand side. Let's settle down as we have our study scripture session now. Jesus' name we pray. This morning, we are looking at a very important topic, children. And it's a topic you must bring behind your mind and let it settle in your heart all through your life so that you will be able to enjoy plan of God for you in heaven. What is that topic? Our topic is signs of the end. What is our topic? I cannot hear you. Signs of the end. Before we go ahead, we want to read the Bible. I want you to know that in the gospel, Matthew, Luke, and Mark, we have the same testimony of what Jesus said about the signs of the end. Jesus said about the signs of the end. Open your Bible. Let's read very quickly from Matthew chapter 24, verse 1 to 14. Matthew 24, verses 1 to 14. I want you to listen. To Jesus Jesus understanding of your word in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Read and Jesus quickly. went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, He ye not all these things. Verily I say unto there shall not be left there one stone upon another that I shall not be thrown down. And as he sat upon the mouth of olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of words, and rumors of words. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things 
was come to pass, for the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famine, and pestilence, and earthquake in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrow. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise, and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. May the Lord bless the reading of his word in our lives in the name of Jesus. Amen. Matthew 24, verses 21 to 25. Thank you. God bless you. Jesus is the one that is saying that. He said, Behold, take note. I have told you. That means I have warned you. Because all these things will happen. And there will be great tribulation. Take note. I have told you. Let me let you know, children, that when Jesus Christ is giving us this revelation and his warning, Verses 30, 42 and 44. Matthew. Very quickly. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. But know this that if the bad man of the house had known it, what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered. Thank you. That is also the warning of Jesus Christ to all friends of Jesus. Now, very quickly, we are looking at the signs of the end. What's our topic again? I cannot hear you. When Jesus Christ was warning 
know. He made us to understand that there are some things that will happen. And when you look at the slide, you will observe that Jesus Christ is saying that there will be rapture. The first thing that will happen, let's look at the events that will happen. There will be the rapture. This is the catching away of all ready friends of Jesus. And it will occur before what we call the great tribulation, great trouble, a time of great agony. It's going to happen suddenly. When Jesus will appear with him in his sky, the angel will sound the trumpet. And when the trumpet sounds, all friends of Jesus that are ready will be packed up. They will fly up to meet Jesus in the air. I pray you will be one of them. I will be one of them. I pray you will be ready to be one of those that will go with Jesus in the sky. You will not be left behind in Jesus' name. And after that, we are told from the word of Jesus that immediately there will be great tribulation. What do I call it? Another word for tribulation is trouble. Great trouble. In fact, my prayer is that you will not be here at that time. At the time of that great trouble, the Antichrist, when you say Antichrist, the man that is against Jesus, will come and take over the rule of the earth. It will be so terrible for those that are left behind. My prayer for you and for myself and for all friends of Jesus is that we will not be careless. I say you will not be careless. We will watch over your life and be ready for rapture. Because during that great tribulation, it will be a time of great suffering, agony. And after that, oh no. <laughs> Antichrist himself will be found. And all the false prophets that are in the world, and they will be cast into the bottomless pit. Jesus will conquer the Antichrist. And immediately after that, let me tell you something. Before that period ends, it will last for several terrible, serious agony, agony of time. Several years. Ah, in fact, I pray you will not fall into agony and trouble for one day. Can I hear your amen? And when we now talk about seven years, it will be a very serious matter. And immediately after that, Jesus will come and establish his millennium. Jeremiah chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 7, Jeremiah chapter 1, reading from verse 7, but the Lord said unto me, unto me, Jeremiah, and unto you as well, the Lord said unto me, say not, I am shivering and shaking and timid and fearful and frightened before the people he sends us to. God loves them and he sends us a message of love that will save their soul, that will deliver them from eternal death, that they will not perish. And if you carry such a wonderful message, a life-saving message, a soul-saving message, and you love the people you are speaking to, then you and God has assured you that he is sending you. He put his word in your mouth. You will not be afraid in Jesus' name. I will not be afraid in Jesus' name. 
we're looking at first timothy chapter four and we're reading from verse one first timothy chapter four reading from verse one it says now the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith giving heed to seducing spirit and doctrines of devils look at verse 6 even in that situation in verse 6 it says if thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things thou shalt be a good minister when you put the people in remembrance this is what god has said this is what is happening now everything is according to his word this is prophecy being fulfilled and you remind them that christ is about to come and everyone that is not saved or backsliding shall come back and be saved and everyone that is saved and is not a living a consistent holy life and without holiness no man shall save the lord you encourage them and you pray with them and you counsel them that whatever challenges in their lives not making them to show that consistent life of christian faith and salvation you root that out of their lives and you lead them to real repentance and restoration and you lead them to that sanctification that without holiness no man shall say the lord and then you let them seek the power of god that will strengthen them embolden them encourage them empower them that's what the lord is calling us to and we do that without any fear and we do that without uh, you know shaking or uh, whatever before anyone it says you put the brethren in remembrance of this thing thou shalt be a good minister of jesus christ nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine whereunto thou hast ordained uh, attain it says in verse 16 uh, in verse 16 take heed unto thyself don't be timid take heed unto thyself live courageously live with conviction and live without compromise take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine continue in them for in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee amen look at number three here number three now we're looking at the uh, firm decree of the most foremost wise king that's god we're talking about god is foremost is the highest is eternal and is uh, when one kingdom passes away he still remains there and when one king dies and changes and god changes him and he setteth up another god is still there and when one powerful emperor powerful man powerful king when he's deposed when he is uh, pushed aside another one comes god is still there the same god at the time of uh, Pharaoh, the same God at the time of the Assyrian king Sennacherib, at the same God at the time of Nebuchadnezzar, the same God at the time of Herod, is still the same God on the throne. They come, they go. They come, they perish. They come, they are dethroned. They come, they are driven away. But God remains the same. He is the foremost wise God and he has his own decree too and when he makes his own decree the decree of the eternal God will stand we're looking at uh, Daniel chapter 2 and we're reading from verse 30 Daniel chapter 2 verse 30 but as for me this secret is not revealed to me for any wisdom that I have more than any living but for their sakes that shall make known the interpretation to the king that thou mightest know the thoughts of thine heart. In Daniel chapter 4, we're looking at verse 17. Daniel chapter 4, verse 17. It says in verse 17, it tells us this matter is by the decree of the watches of the watchers and that and the demand by the word of the holy ones to the intent that the living may know 
that the most high, the most high God in heaven rules in the kingdom of men and gives it to whomsoever he will. You see that? The God of heaven, the most high rules in the kingdoms of men and he gives the kingdoms to whomsoever he will and set us over each even the people like look like the basest of men look at verse 24 in verse 24 it says this is the interpretation O king and this is the decree of the most high which is come upon my lord the king god is the one that rules and whoever he puts there is still in charge and he has a decree that supersedes that goes beyond the decree of any man in proverbs chapter 8 reading from verse 29 proverbs chapter 8 and we're reading from verse 29 when he gave to the sea here is christ talking and he said when the father the Almighty, the ancient of days, when he gave to the sea his decree that the waters should not pass his commandment when he appointed the foundations of the earth. Then in verse 30, he says, Then I was by him. And then he says, As one brought up with him and I was daily his delight rejoicing always before him Psalm 2 we're looking at verse 6 in Psalm 2 looking at verse 6 it says yet I have set my king upon my holy hill of Zion that's the almighty saying he has the final say he has the final word about the dominions and the kingdoms of this world. And he says, I sent my, I set my king. That's his only begotten son. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. Look at verse 7. It says in verse 7, I will declare the decree. He has the final decree on any life, on any king, on any community on any nation he has the final decree upon the kingdoms of this world nebuchadnezzar does not did not have the final decree there is another decree the decree of the almighty god that supersedes every other decree on earth i will declare the decree the lord have said unto me thou art my son this day have I begotten thee. And then in verse 8, in verse 8, it says, Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen, the Gentiles, for thine inheritance, and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Then in verse 9, in verse 9, it says, Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron, because all judgment has been given to the hand of the Son of God, and shall dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. And then in verse 10, it says, Be wise now. Therefore, O ye kings, be wise now, O ye emperors. Be wise now, O ye rulers, because there is one that is higher than the highest. Be wise now, therefore, O ye kings, be instructed, ye judges of the earth. And then in verse 11, in verse 11, serve the Lord with fear that he is your fear. If you don't come to the Lord and seek the Lord, now if you perish, if you die in a condition of your sinfulness, even though you are a king, even though you are an emperor, even though you are a ruler, where will you spend eternity? Serve the Lord. Come and repent. Come.